Hello everyone, welcome to my class on uh, digital painting. And um, basically this class is just going to be more of an introduction to Photoshop and various techniques which I'm sure you're going to be using throughout your entire career. And a lot of the techniques I go, I'm going to go over are like just pretty much industry standards. So without any further ado, let's get started because we got a lot to talk about. So basically what I want to talk about a little bit first is the interface. So, so this is CS5. This is the latest of um, Adobe Photoshop uh, digital software program. And this software program has primarily been used for working in um, probably with photos and touching them up and getting ready to getting like uh, prints out. So it was never really sought out to be as a digital painting program. That kind of really bloomed in the maybe like 2000 when they really started paying attention and trying to give artists, you know, some of the tools that they really need to do their job. But it still acts as a photo touching up uh, program and it's still the best in my opinion. Painter is also really good. It has a lot of good features, but a lot of those features are now finally coming into Photoshop because Painter is purely just for digital painting versus Photoshop, which is, you know, you can use it for multiple things. So anyways, um, I'm hoping at least you have Photoshop right now and you're kind of getting more familiar with it. Um, so here we have our layers. So just by clicking on this little icon, you can actually create a new layer. And this is going to be incredibly handy. Let's say we have some random shape here. It's not even, not even going to be anything. So if I take this background off, this is our background. There's nothing on here. So there's only this guy. And to think about layers, you know, it's just literally one stack on top of the other. So here's our background, foreground, I'm sorry, middle ground and foreground. So that's the easiest way to think about layers. And I know this is going to be going pretty quickly. So um, don't worry about it. We're going to be talking through this, talking about this through the entire course. And what might not make sense right now will probably make sense in the future. So, you know, don't sweat it. The only, for the first couple assignments, they're going to be really basic and easy. And then we're going to get more and more complicated using like photo textures and how to merge them into a painting and how to make it look like, you know, it's not totally ripping off photos and like getting that weird pixel grain. So, you know, just bear with me. We'll get through this. So, this is your brush, um, your main brush icon. So, the steps that you can do here is you can do like scattering. And you should really just go ahead and play with all these different kind of parameters and try to get familiar with them and try to figure out what they can do. Because there's so many, there's so many functions in Photoshop. It's it's almost impossible to just, you can almost just have an entire class just talking about the buttons and all the random stuff it can do, but it wouldn't do you any good because there's like a million ways to, to do something in Photoshop. So, like for this example, this is a little scatter brush I have. But if I go to our brush icon, I can actually change this. So, let's say I want to give it even more scatter, you know, and pump up the count. So now it's much thicker. Or if I want to take off smoothing and take off the scattering altogether. So then get this really cool, interesting, like organic line. So you could do a million things in Photoshop. Just because I show you one way doesn't necessarily mean like that's the only way to do something. You could always find like any solution. So <coughs> the next thing up here is our tool presets. And these are kind of like the brushes I'm going to give you guys. There's quite a bit here to choose from and I got these from various sources, either friends or going online and trying to download free brushes. These are the couple that I made and I really like um, my Sharp Fine pencil tool. Just because I feel like it, it gets this really nice arc and I love that kind of like fade outline a little bit. But a lot of these brushes here, these are all pretty, like all these are free, 
You know, I found them some way, somehow online. And um, you'll probably see me, when I'm demoing, you'll probably see me use a brush you don't see in that same tool preset. And the only reason for that is because I got really comfortable with using some of the brushes that we got from our studios. So a lot of times, you know, to make sure a film looks like it was made by one person, everyone has to give each other their brushes that they use on the production and try and make sure, like, it looks like everyone's uh, background paintings will look the same. In concept designs, you don't see this as much, but for film and, um, and 2D, especially for 2D background painting, it's pretty standard. So I gave you guys a lot of brushes here to work with, and I think this is, this is a lot more brushes than, than I had when I was first starting out, so I think this is going to be more than enough for you guys to at least do your assignments and hopefully make some really cool paintings in this class. I mean, in the end, that's like what I really want you guys to do. You know, to teach you how to use Photoshop is is really simple. The hard part is is knowing when to when to actually use a tool and when to not use a tool. So basically, what that means is how far on a digital painting are you willing to push? Because there's some paintings that just look so digital, and they really can't hide it because they're only using like one brush and they're not they're not really pushing themselves to change that. So these are you can get really familiar with these guys. These are your lasso tools. And what a lasso tool is, is you make a selection and whatever I paint out here, it's not going to show up. But it's whatever I paint in here, this is where it's going to show up. And this is and this tool is incredibly useful. I mean, I use this one all the time, and I know plenty of people who pretty much can just build a painting just using a lasso tool. So it's a really great tool. And of course, if you hold down, they come in different shapes and sizes. And if you click on um, the lasso tool and hold it down, you can go to polygon tool. So you make really sharp, angular kind of shapes. So it's, it's really handy. Um, another thing you have here is your color wheel or your color selection. And then I recommend, I think the standard that it comes in is CMYK. I would actually change that to HSB, which is hue, saturation, and brightness. Because um, this is pretty much like all you really need. So like, let's say we're going to have something that's pretty cool. So here's a cool color pretty dark. And I want to brighten it up. So I guess to go to brightness and I push that up a little bit. And depending like how hard you push on your pen, you know, that's gonna translate there. Like let's say I want to change the saturation or hue, but I want it to be the same saturation. I just have to move this slider. So it's really handy. And it's a lot easier than using the RGB the RGB, you have to do a little bit of color mixing, and you got to know what colors you're going to mix to get really what you want. But like I said, this is my preference. You know, whatever you guys feel comfortable with, you should totally be allowed to do it. And a lot of times in Photoshop, that's all that really is. You get used to a routine, and you just kind of stick with it. And then you slowly add little, like, uh, tidbits to change it up a little bit. And moving down, you know, you have the, the magic wand. This is primarily for, selection, for selecting. So if I hold down there, it's going to select everything on the outside. And again, you know, you'll be using this tool a lot. And then going down, you have your uh, eyedropper, so you can choose different colors. And the interesting thing in uh, CS5, which is kind of new, is the color down below is actually the previous color I selected, and the color on top is the current color. So it's kind of cool to see, like, you know, just how far off or, like, how much you're actually changing the color. And then you can get those really cool kind of midtones. 
So it's pretty rad. I found that to be pretty useful. You got your stamp tool. So you hit Alt, select a portion on the painting, and it's actually going to start duplicating it. Pretty handy. I don't use this one too much because a lot of times in um, painting for animation, you're not you try to avoid cloning elements all around. When you can do it, that's awesome. But the problem with what we do is so stylized that you kind of have to make sure everything feels different and unique. In a um, more conceptual painting, it's a lot easier to get away with. So here you have your erase tools, and it's just as it sounds. your gradient tool. So right now it's uh, here we, we can choose a color red and now if you click on this little icon you can change this color to like let's go blue. And this is a great way to just get your basic value system going. So you could start a painting just as simple as this. And it's going to look super psychedelic, but, you know, this is one of those things you could do to break up your routine and make something really interesting that you probably wouldn't make on your own. And that's really the most uh, greatest thing about digital painting is you could literally do anything you want, and you can go on back and undo like plenty of times. And you could really like just experiment with stuff that like it would be really difficult to to actually try in um, traditional. So already I have a weird color scheme, but there's something interesting. Probably when I come back and look at it, I'll be like, why did I paint that? But that's the cool thing about digital. You can really just go in and do something and tweak it. And to some extent, that is its downfall, too, because you'll spend a lot of time just tweaking things. And you could spend forever just refining and refining it and just like uh, just painting over a lot of elements. Versus in traditional, when it's like you really have to make a decision right then and there. So, you know, that's funky, but it's just a, an idea. Like, what if I take these two color schemes and I try to make something out of it? So that's the gradient tool. Here we have the, make a new one. basic man. So you take your smudge tool. You can actually smudge it out, make interesting um, lost shapes and lost edges. This is the dodge tool. So what it's doing is it, it's actually burning the pixels. It's and making it a bit more brighter. And the pen tool. So the pen tool is really incredibly handy because you can really make a lot of arcs that would be really difficult to to try to do in um with just like your uh, arm because <coughs> the hard thing about doing anything digital is not you're not really working on papers you get like this natural arc kind of going on but in digital if you're using a Cintiq it's a lot easier but if you're using um just uh, the Wacom tablets, it's a lot harder to get like really nice curves. So, but on a Cintiq, it's a little bit easier to get the curves, but you still have the same problem. Like when you just draw on paper, it just feels natural for obvious reasons. So the pen tool is actually really helpful. And if you right click it, you can go stroke path, and then you can choose 
any of these elements that strike your uh, path. So I usually like to use brush. Oops. So if I use brush, I'm going to change this to three. See how that looks. Maybe a bit larger. So a lot of it's trial and error, but eventually, you know, you're going to hit the mark that you want. So I go right back, right click, and if you go to paths and click out, it'll disappear. But if you click on it, you have like the selection, and you can alter it and change it any way you want. So I'm just going to click out of there for now. See, now I have that little path tool that I just did. And I can just paint inside and, you know, this is how you keep your edges like super clean. And if I had it on a different layer, it would be easier to paint. But since I had it on one layer, it's just kind of like formed there, but it's all right. Cool. So that's how we do that. Then you could also use the pen tool. I'm going to make a shape here. Alright, so another thing you could do is click on path. And then you can click on this icon. Which will basically see if I can get the name stroke path with the brush. So you can see it getting a little bit thicker there, but it doesn't work quite as well. Surprised. But you could do like the free transformation tool. Oops. Which is control T. I think it's that little guy there that's throwing me off. Okay. Yeah, that little guy was kind of throwing me off. So if you click on there, you have another option of making the selection tool. And it will basically load a path, a path as a selection. So you could click there and you have your marching ants. And then we can come back here. Try to make this a little bit, maybe add a little bit of bounce light. So it's cool, you can get that really nice kind of curve gradation. Then you have your type tool, so you can, oops, have to make sure it's colored up here. It's black. You know, just typing. And if you click here, you can actually change it to a lot of different fonts and text. So that's always useful. That. So these are just your path selection tool. So let's go to... You can click on this, and you can move it as a whole. But let's say you want to get those individual anchor points, which are these guys. Now you can. So you have to click out here, and then click it back in. But now you can move these guys all individually. These are just shape tools. I don't really use any of these, actually. Maybe the line tool at best, but sometimes the ellipse tool. Oops. 
really off there, but you get the idea. You could use it for uh, making circles and ellipses. Uh, these 3D objects, you're not going to be using any of these. These are I'm just teaching you a basic painting class. Um, 3D rotate camera, I'm not going to use the hand tool. Move around. Magnify class, zoom in, zoom out. If you're in um, anything lower than CS4, uh, you'll probably have to hold and then drag, and it'll make the um, the window icon for zooming in. But in CS5, you can just zoom in, in and out. And then, um, so this is your foreground color. Oops. And this is your background color. It even tells you right there. So what that means is, as soon as I hit erase, that's going to go away. That's Hmm, interesting. Usually when you hit erase, they'll give you the background color. But if you ever want to switch it, you just click on these two arrows, and I can paint with your background color. Alright, so actually, I guess they, maybe this is just one of the things they changed also, but here's your background, so if you click on your background, and then if you hit the erase tool, it's going to choose the, the background color for the erase tool. I use it more just primarily for toggling colors I want, or I want to compare them to. So if I see a color there, I'm like, oh, this one's really cool. Then I'll flip back, take this color, and then compare them and see which one I like better. Or get that sweet middle color. And then go back to this color. But you also have the eye drop tool that can easily do that as well. So here are the action buttons that I made. And I'm just going to give them to you guys because since I made them, no one really owns these. So except for me, but whatever. <laughs> the only tool here I do not own is this pool pencil tool, which I got from a Disney artist over at uh, Consumer Products. And he was cool about letting people have it. So basically, what this tool is, yeah, fine. And if you double click on the magnify tool, it zooms in all the way to the maximum uh, screen. Or you could click on any of these buttons here as well. So, here we go. I'm just going to do a random Later in the class, I'm going to show you guys um, how to paint a character digitally. And I've just been drawing a lot of dirty kids lately because I wanted to do uh, an assignment that had the uh, little leagues, but what they look like if they're from like the 1800s, and that should be really fun. I'm looking forward to doing that painting. But it, I just want to show you guys this little um, action tool set real quick. And I'm trying to make this as dirty as possible, only to illustrate a point. It'll be really soft, too, around these edges. I 
See, the one thing I like about this brush I have is um, it really makes everything like, or makes the, makes these lines almost feel a little bit like pencil. Or maybe more closer to ballpoint pen or something, but I just like the, the line quality. So here's our rough. Now a lot of times when you let's see, I'll take this guy, I'm gonna merge him down. So you're like, oh shit. I just merged it down to like my background layer, so I have to like hit this little, the wand tool. You see it's kind of losing a lot of this detail. Let's just try that. I'm going to go selection, inverse selection. So that's going to get everything in the inside. Then I have my copy from selection. So if you look here, I got the background, which is, which is like what I didn't want because I just want the line. And we're actually losing quite a bit, so I'm going to try to get rid of that white by select color range. Choose white. Gonna hit delete. Okay, not bad. You know, it feels like there's a little bit missing, especially right here. I'm missing this kind of like uh, a lot of these little subtle strokes. So let's say you're in the pinch and you get in that situation. I'm just going to hit pull pencil. There it is on its own separate layer. Now what's great about this thing is it really captured a lot of the detail. If this was a pencil drawing, it would capture it all, which is pretty amazing. So I found this to be a pretty nice workaround. So I'm going to show it this to you guys. So this was a character I did. It's um, done traditionally, paper and pencil. So if I go here, I'm going to click uh, Pull Pencil. It's going to make everything black and white, but look how well this thing, look at that, it just pretty much got all the line quality. Didn't lose anything, which is really awesome. I think it automatically turns it to a grayscale, but now you can put like a different background, different colors and everything. So it's, an, it's a really great tool, especially if you're going to make a portfolio and you have pencil drawings and you want to be over like a certain color background or you can even paint the the actual drawing itself so by clicking down this icon it's called transparency uh, layer lock and it's only going to let me paint whoops, it's only going to let me paint whatever uh, it should only let me paint the colors on the character themselves like the line drawing I think I have to go over here to color. Nope. Alright. I think what I have to do is go here. You could go to image mode, grayscale, discard, image adjust brightness and contrast. I'm going to push up the brightness just a little bit and push up that contrast. What I'm trying to do is make the background as white as I can. That way when I push this button, pull pencil tool, 